we're analyzing Digital Realty Trust stock ticker DLR to see if its market price is a fair value. We're using the Select 6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating an intrinsic value for Digital Realty. Then we're giving a final rating to the business. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing Digital Realty for your portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand Digital Realty stock performance. Right now, Digital Realty trades for $99.15 per share. In the last year, their stock price is down 34.5%. Their declines are underperforming the S&P 500 index. In the last five years, Digital Realty stock price is down 6.5% overall. In the last 10 years, Digital Realty is compounding at 4% annually. Their stock price is up 46% overall. Going back prior to the global financial crisis, in the last 18 years, Digital Realty is compounding their stock price at 11% annually. The company as a real estate investment trust also pays out dividends. Right now, Digital Realty pays a big 4.9% dividend yield. Their average dividend yield throughout this time frame is in addition to the returns from their stock. Digital Realty trades just $14 above their 52-week low. The company's down more than $50 from their 52-week high. More than 5% of the company's shares are sold short. Digital Realty is a large business. They have nearly a $29 billion market cap. But why should we be paying close attention to Digital Realty? Digital Realty owns and operates over 300 data centers worldwide. It has nearly 40 million rentable square feet across five continents. Digital's offerings range from retail co-location, where an enterprise may rent a single cabinet and rely on digital to provide all the accommodations, to cold shells, where hyperscale cloud service providers can simply rent much or all of a barren, power-connected building. In recent years, Digital Realty has de-emphasized cold shells and now primarily provides higher-level service to tenants, which outsource their related IT needs to digital. Digital Realty has also moved into the co-location business, increasingly serving enterprises and facilitating network and cloud connections. Starting with metric number one, we want their average return on equity in the last five years to be above 12%. This is because the typical REIT earns about a 6% return on equity. We can build in margin of safety based off the quality of the business if it hits this benchmark. Digital Realty's return on equity has been all over the place throughout this time. They earned a high of 9.5% returns on equity in 2021. Their most recent fiscal year, they actually declined to the lowest they've been throughout this time frame. On average, Digital Realty earns about 4.5% returns on capital in a given year. This is coming in below a typical REIT and well below the benchmark we're looking for. This is an X on metric number one. Metric number two, we're looking at Digital Realty's growth. We want to see growth in their revenues and their cash from operations in the last five years. Both of these have to be up for this to be a check. During this time, Digital Realty's grown their revenues by 52%. Their cash from operations have grown by 20%. This is modest growth for Digital Realty, and this is a check on metric number two. Metric number three, we're looking for decreasing shares outstanding. Many REITs tend to be externally funded, meaning they rely on either issuing shares or taking on debt to fuel their growth. Digital Realty is no exception. In the last five years, they've diluted existing shareholders by 44%. This is quite a bit of shareholder dilution. We were looking for the opposite, which tends to be atypical for REITs. Regardless, this is an X on metric number three. In metric number four, we're putting our previous metrics together. Here, we're looking for cash flow per share growth in the last five years for Digital Realty. We learned that Digital Realty has grown their cash from operations by 20% during this time, but they've diluted existing shareholders by 44%. This means their shareholder dilution outpaces their cash flow growth, and this is an X on metric number four. Thus far, their dilution doesn't look like it's added value for long-term shareholders. Recapping where we stand currently, through our first four metrics, we have one check and three Xs for digital realty. Metric number five, we're evaluating how the business uses debt. During economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are likely at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. We want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of cash from operations Digital Realty has produced in their last five years. Digital Realty has added on quite significantly to their debt position during this time. Currently, they have $18 billion worth of net debt. During the last five years, they produced just under $8 billion in cash from operations. Their debt position is coming in at more than double their cash from operations. This is an X on metric number five. The business has raised quite a bit of money in recent years by issuing both shares and debt. That's yet to translate, if at all, into growth in their cash from operations. With an X here on metric number five, we have one check and four Xs through our first five metrics. If their debt load is a concern for you, you'd want to dig into their filings to learn about this in more detail. Before we get to our sixth metric, let's not forget about our bonus. 
As our bonus, we're looking at Digital Realty's dividend profile. Digital Realty as a REIT has to pay out more than 90% of their earnings as common dividends to shareholders. Right now, Digital Realty pays a large 4.9% dividend yield. They've grown their dividend yield in all five of these years. Even though they've had decreasing cash flows per share, the company has kept a modest gap between their cash flows and the dividends they paid out. They've supported their dividend payouts in all five of these years. While their dividend payout ratio is higher today than it was five years ago, it still looks like they're able to support their dividend this is a snapshot of their last five years of performance. It's no guarantee for the future, but it looks like Digital Realty's dividend is supported by their cash flows now. Keep in mind the competing uses for cash flows and what the business is going to have to do about its debt situation. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want their average cash from operations to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this will provide a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It may offer a reasonable starting point for evaluation of digital realty. Digital realty has just under a $50 billion total enterprise value. This takes into account both their market cap and their net debt position. It gives a perspective of digital realty that's similar to as if they were a private company. We learned digital realty produced just under $8 billion in cash from operations in their last five years, meaning in an average year, they produce about $1.6 billion in cash from operations. When we divide that by their nearly $50 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about a 3.2% average cash from operations to enterprise value yield. The companies produce $1.6 billion in cash from operations in their most recent fiscal year, so they have about the same current cash from operations to enterprise value yield as well. Both of these are coming in just below the yield of the 10-year treasury. That's down from that risk premium we'd be seeking, meaning this is an X on metric number six for digital. Digital realty. Just because this is the case doesn't mean you're going to throw out this business. This is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. It's not financial advice. Stick around as we come to a more concrete estimate of digital realty's fair intrinsic value before giving our rating to the business. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze digital realty, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to an estimate of digital realty's fair intrinsic value. A DCF model is based off the predictability of a company's free cash flows. It's like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. We're starting with a three-year average of digital realty's cash flows, then using historical growth assumptions to project these into the future. It's up to you to do your own homework here. Assuming they grow their cash flows at a rate of 3 percent annually for the next 10 years, then assuming that these grow at 2% annually for the 10 years from there, if we add in the company's tangible book value, which gives us an estimate of their net worth, if we were seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return Warren Buffett is looking for in addition to his margin of safety requirements, from today's valuations, an estimate of digital realty's fair intrinsic value is around $61 per share. That's down $38 from their current stock price. It looks like there would not be a margin of safety at today's valuation and that it would be trending toward being more overvalued. There are key factors to be mindful of. Digital Realty has been a moderately predictable business in its past. That's no guarantee for the future and their level of predictability could go down. This generally depends on the type of business this is and what some of their contracts would look like for their clients. We would also not be doubly counting the company's dividends. Their 4.9% dividend yield would be included in this 15% discount rate. Their stock price would not be appreciating by 15% in these years, even at this valuation. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Before considering any potential investment decision, consult with your financial advisor. In just a moment, we'll give our rating to digital realty, but we have to address something first. What are the qualitative aspects of the business? Starting with the key qualitative points supporting a potential long thesis. Number one, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and other innovations that increase the public's demand for data and connectivity require more hardware and connections in data centers. Number two, Digital Realty's global offering and high exposure to cloud providers gives it an advantage over competitors that operate in more narrow geographies or can only offer retail co-location space. Number three, Digital Realty's shift toward connection and co-location exposes it to the most attractive parts of the data center business and the growth tailwinds of cloud providers and data connectivity. Then for the qualitative factors supporting a potential short thesis, number one, technological advances will likely allow aggregation data needs to be met with less physical space and power and fewer direct connections, reducing data center needs. Number two, digital realty is very dependent on cloud service providers, leaving it at the mercy of those companies. Number three, competitor Equinix and their foray into hyperscale eliminates digital realty's distinction as the biggest data center provider, offering a full suite of services from single cabinets to full hyperscale data centers. There you have it for a balanced perspective of some of the qualitative factors of the business. Now it's time to give our rating. 
In analyzing Digital Realty Trust, stock ticker DLR, we learned the business earns below average returns on equity. The company has grown their revenues and their cash from operations in the past five years. This has come at the expense of 44% shareholder dilution and taking on quite a bit of debt that looks like it's not fully supported by their cash from operations. Those could be potential concerns as it looks like value has yet to be created for shareholders through management's capital allocation in the last five years. On both a current and an average basis of their cash from operations to their enterprise value yields, those are both about the same coming in below the yield of the 10-year treasury and below the risk premium we'd be seeking. Digital Realty has grown their dividends in all five of the last years and they've managed to support these with their cash from operations. What their dividend looks like in the future will come down to how the business chooses to use its cash flows. It's worth reiterating this analysis is not financial advice. With all the factors of our analysis combined, Digital Realty looks like a weak candidate for further research. Performing our discounted cash flow analysis, if you've done the work and you believe those historical growth assumptions, from today's valuations, if you were seeking a 15% rate of return, an estimate of Digital Realty's fair intrinsic value is around $61 per share. Digital Realty was last at those levels in July of 2014. You'd want to be patient as you dig in and learn more about the company. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Digital Realty with me, and have a great day.